Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times to the lotus feet of my Param Guru Dev, to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupa Nuga Gaudiya Guru Param. And finally, I offer my pranam to Pujapad, Sri Bhakti Vichar Vishnu Maharaj and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis once upon a See Krishna's Leela 5,000 years ago by the power of Yoga Maya became visible to the people of the world. So in the same way, only by the power of Yoga Maya, Harikata becomes audible to the people of this world. It is a transcendental experience. In Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, Tasmin Mahan Mukaritam Madhubich Charitra Priyusha Shesha Sarita Parita Sravanti Tayepi Bantra Vitisat Nupagada Kainais Tanas Prashant Asanatrit Bayashoka Moha. The meaning is that Tasmin Mahan Mukarita Madhubich Charitra Madhubich Charitra. Charitra means the activities. The pastimes of Madhu Beach, hmm? Madhu Sudan, Madhu Dwish. <laughs> the enemy of the Madhu demon, that is Krishna. His pastimes, when they emanate from the lips of Mahan, the great devotees, then they become Mukharita. In other words, the Leela of Krishna transforms and turns into a sound vibration. Then there is a pure Vaishnava in whose heart Krishna is always playing. Then there are some external symptoms. Piyusha Shesha Sarita Parita Shravanti that rivers of nectar are flowing continuously in all directions in the form of Harikata. Rasik Vaishnava is always Rasik. Not sometimes rasik. Mm -hmm. huh? Like a rasagula <laughs> that has been soaking for a week in the syrup. Mm -hmm. If you take it out, the rasa is dripping. If you touch the rasagula anywhere, more rasa is coming. If you squeeze it, more will come. And still there's more inside. Mm -hmm. huh? So where there is a rasik Vaishnava, then piyusha shesha sarita parita 
rivers of sweet harikata flowing in every direction, non-stop, without any break. Why is it compared to river? Because the river flows without any effort. Because it comes from the top of the mountain. And the river naturally without effort flows down the mountain. In the same way, the Dova Vaishnava is in this world. It looks like it. But they are situated in the transcendental world. So they are on the top of the mountain. On the top of the mountain also there is snow. And when the warm season comes, then the snow melts and flows down in, in the current of the river. So in the same way, when we serve pure Vaishnavas, when we please them by our sacrifice and surrender, then the heart of that pure Vaishnava melts and then Harikata flows down naturally. Mm-hmm. Or, just like a cow. Mm-hmm. Those who uh, did seva in a Goshala, they know, if you try to milk the cow, but the milk is not flowing. So then you have to bring the calf. Mm-hmm. And the calf will suck a little for, and then the milk will flow. Because the mother cow has so much affection for vats, for the calf. So in the same way, when we serve our Gurudev with so much affection, hmm? <coughs> Shoneko Rishi and the sages of Naimishranya, they said to Sutta Goswami, we know that you are a very snigdashisha, affectionate disciple. Hmm? You served you. Guru Dei fully taking your life in your hands. Hmm? And because of this, then it's sure. Guru Yusnik Dasa Sisasa Guru Guyam Apyota. It's certain that your Guru Dev has imparted to you, to you the Guya. Confidential transcendental knowledge. Hmm? So in the same way, just as when the calf approaches the cow, then the milk begins to flow. When the disciple has very affectionate serving relation, Niskapat Niswata Guru Seva without any duplicity, without any uh, selfishness, without any ulterior motive, then the heart of that pure devotee melts and just as the calf, uh, the milk is flowing to the calf in the same way, the nectar of Harikata is flowing from the lips of the great devotee. So Tasmin Mahan Mukarita Marubit Charitra First point, Krishna's Lila is going on by Yoga Maya. Now we cannot see its aprakat, unmanifest. But the pure Vaishnavas are seeing that Lila, and when we serve them fully from the heart, their hearts melt, and naturally that Lila, Tasmin Mahan Mukarita, transforms into the vocal edition, hmm? vocal format, and comes out in the form of Harikata. And when that Harikata goes in the ear of the disciple, Tanbhakti, Tanbhakti Yoga Paribhavita Ritsaroja Asai Sutekshita Patana Nunata Punksa Lord Brahma, he said, when the heart is saturated with devotion and the disciple is hearing, then that sound vibration of the Kata goes into the heart and then one has the darshan of that Leela. It was Krishna's Leela it became sound, came from the lips of Sri Guru, went into the ear of the disciple, and then in his heart it reverted back and became Lila again. <laughs> and that is called Shravana. <clears throat> if we are not experiencing this purti, the vision in the heart of Sri Krishna, while we are hearing there and then, Sadyo Ridhyavaruddha Tayatakriti Bhisu Surushmi Tachanat, Tachanat there and then. Huh? then we are not actually hearing. Srila Jiva Goswami Pari in Bhakti Sandarbha, he said, Pratamam namna shavana shudhyatam apeksham shudhecha anta karane rupa shavane na tad udoi yogyata bhavati In the beginning, hearing, 
uh, depends on purity of the heart. And to purify the heart, one should hear the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And when the heart has become purified by hearing the holy name, then one can hear about the roof, the form of Sri Krishna. Kasturi tilakam lalata patale vakshastale gostupa. Nas agre varamukti kam karate venu kare kam karam. Savange hani chandanam. So I tam kante ch muktavali. Gopastri paravesito vijayate. Gopal judamani. How Sri Krishna is decorated with the kasturi tilak. Oh, with an elephant pearl here. Yeah. Huh? People think, what is this pearl hanging from Krishna's nose? <laughs> Don't think like that. Huh? When heart is purified, then we begin to realize, to see the qualities of Krishna. Just like Radharani, her earrings, they are not made of gold. They are made of a lobe. Greed to hear about the sweetness and qualities of Krishna. So in the same way, see Krishna's nose pearl is made of his greed to smell the fragrance of the uh, angasorap of the beautiful divine form of Radhika. Everything in the transcendental world is made of bhav, bhavmai, sachidananda. Chidananda means bhav. So when the heart is purified by hearing the holy name, then mm, shudhei cha anta karanei rupa sravanena Tad udoe jogyata bhavati. Then one becomes qualified that when you hear about Krishna's form, then it awakens in the heart. And when the form is fully awakened, and one then one hears about Krishna's qualities. And his qualities begin to gradually awaken within the heart. And then his parika, his associates. And then when one begins to realize, have the anubhuti, anubhav of the Madhurya, the sweetness of the exchange between Sri Krishna and his devotees. Then one becomes attracted to that. This is very important. And then one is inspired to follow in the wake of their mood. That is called Raga Nuga Bhakti. There are two types of Bhakti. Vaidhi Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti. Srila Rupa Goswami Bhatt, in his unprecedented scripture, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, has given all the Paribhasha, the definitions, so that we can precisely understand the science of devotion. He said there, Yaktar Ragano Vaptatvat Prabriti Upajayate Shashane Naiva Shastasya Yasa Vaidi Uchate. Yasa Vaidhi Bhakti Uchate. So, what is Vaidhi Bhakti? Yatra Ragana Vaptatvat. Means that one's heart has not become pervaded with a taste for the rag, the attachment of the associates of Krishna. In other words, you may have heard something and begin to realize the form of Krishna, something of the qualities of Krishna. But until one begins to realize the parika, the associates, and their rag, their spontaneous attachment for Krishna shines like the moon. And when the rays of their rag, their attachment for Krishna are reflected in the spatik money, in the crystal of your heart, then you become ulasit, full of joy. I want to be like them. Mm -hmm. Then when you engage in bhakti, that's called Raganuga Bhakti. Mm -hmm. Don't be like Prakrita Sahaja, thinking that Vaidhi Bhakti means following the rules and Raganuga Bhakti means not following any rules. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now I am in Raganuga Bhakti because I don't follow any rules. No, now you became a Pashu. Dvipada Pashu, two-legged animal. Follow rules, be a human being. Mm -hmm. And then, Gradually, gradually, when the heart is purified and in, in Rasik, Braj Rasik Vaishnav Sangha, hearing the Kata, gradually some realization will come of Krishna's associates. And the moon-like rays of their rag 
will shine in the spotic money, in the crystal of your heart and you feel ulas joy. And then uh, you want to chant Hare Krishna. You want to serve all the activities of bhakti are inspired. You want to follow their mood. That is called Raganuga Bhakti. So here, Yatra Raganavaptatva, a person has not attained that taste for the associates rag or thirst to serve and please Krishna, then why, if he doesn't have taste in that, then why does he do bhakti? Praviti upajayate shashane naiva shastrasya. Because this scripture says so. He has shastra artha avadarni mai shraddha or shastriya shraddha. That person has developed faith in the scriptures. And the scriptures say, Ladwa sudolaba midamba husampavante. After many, many lifetimes, you became a human being. So be enthusiastic. Engage in devotional service. Otherwise, you will fall down and become an animal in your next life. So I don't want to be an animal. I want to at least be a human being. So I should enthusiastically engage myself in devotional service. Hmm? So be inspired by the, the shasan, the rules, the regulations, and the chastisement of scripture, and the words of Guru. Oh, Gurudev told me I have to do it, so I have to do it. Gurudev told me I have to chant 16 hours. Oh. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare what time is it? So just doing it because you are told to do it. Hmm? Then maybe Vaidhi Bhakti. So, Shashneva Eva Shastasya Sa Vaidhi Bhakti Uchate. What is Raganuga Bhakti? Iste Swara Siki Raga Paramavistha Bhavet Tanaya Bhavet Bhakti Sata Ragat Mikoditaha. Rag means unquenchable loving thirst. Just like a person who did not drink for a few days is very desperate to drink something, they will die. So similarly, that love which is like a thirst, I must serve, I will die if I don't serve Krishna. It's called rag. And it is spontaneous, no thought, no calculation, spontaneous. Just as each sense is attracted to its sense object. If there's a room full of people, and in that room there's one person who's very beautiful, then you can see all of them, but your eyes will just go directly to the beauty. Because that's the nature of the eye. It automatically goes to beauty. But it's spontaneous, you don't think. So similarly, when not one sense, but all of your senses spontaneously go to Krishna and not to anything else, hmm? that is called rag. Now you may say, this is a very, very high level. Correct. This type of love is only in the eternal associates of Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan. Actually. Hmm? And so that is called Ragatnik Bhakti. Iste Swarasiki Raga, natural spontaneous thirst for their Ishtadev Paramavistata Bhavet, which brings about a Paramavistata. That means complete absorption in Krishna. Exclusive absorption in Krishna. Never think of anything else. Hmm? So, Tanai Yabhavet Bhakti, the Bhakti which is composed of that loving thirst and exclusive absorption, Sata Ragat Mikodita is called the Ragat Mik Bhakti, and that is the Bhakti in the Eternal Associates. So they are called the Ragat Mik Parikar. Virajantim hmm? Abhibhaktam Brajabasi Janadishu. This is found in them. Hmm? But, Ragatmikam Anusritya hmm? Yasa Raganuga Uchate. Hmm? If a person being in this world, their rag is shining into that person's heart because they're realizing as they are hearing, then the person who follows in the wake of those associates, then they are practicing Raga Anuga. Anuga means following the rag, the spontaneous thirst of the eternal associates. So, Srila Rupa Goswami Pai said, Tantan Bhavadi Madhurye Srute Dhi Yada Pekshate Nacha Shastra Na Yuktim Cha Tal Lob Utpati Lakshanam That if a person is hearing about the sweet exchange of Krishna and his associates and hear the word Srute Tantan Bhavadi Madhurye Srute means upon hearing hearing but not just hearing 
uh, as we use the word hearing in the everyday life. In the commentary on this verse, Srila Jiva Goswami, in his Durgam Sangam Anitika, there he said, here the word srute on hearing means kinchit anubhuti, some realization. And realization of the sweetness of the parikars comes after realizing the sweetness of Krishna's name, his form, his qualities, then parikars, this stage. So it means ruchi. Bhajana kriya, anatta nivriti, nishta ruchi, from there. So when a person experiences some of that sweetness, and now their intelligence is no longer dependent on logic and reason and scriptural injunctions. They're not always thinking, what should I do? What does it say in Hari Bhakti Vilas, chapter 7, verse 213? They're not always thinking, but rather they're serving spontaneously in accordance with their taste. Then uh, this is the symptom that low but Lakshanam, greed has come, and that greed is the qualification for Raganuga Bhakti. Some people say, oh, there's no qualification for Raganuga Bhakti, only qualification is greed. Hmm? Hmm? But what is that greed? This is the greed <laughs> described here. It's not a simple thing. Many people, they hear some pastimes of Krishna and they say, oh, I like this. And they become infatuated with that. They may even become obsessed with that. But really, they are still in Tamagun. Hmm? They still have a bigger hunkar, false ego. They're chanting Nam Aparat. Hmm? Offenses to the holy name. Hmm? They have the Ahankaravi Mudatma Kata Nitimanyate. False ego, I am the doer. A very, very low stage. Maybe not even Karish Talikan. Maharaj, perhaps. Maharaj has a program he has to go to. Thank you, Maharaj. Param Puja Padsi. Yati Maharaj. Sorry. Bhakti Vicha Vishnu Maharaj ki. Please give my pranam to Srila Yati Maharaj when you arrive there. Tell him I'm remembering his lotus feet. <laughs> so <laughs> only having some mental attraction uh, fascination with the pastimes of Sri Krishna in Vrindavan does not constitute actual love uh, love will be first some realization and then <clears throat> Some place, come inside. Yes, there's room. If you're outside, come please. Come inside. Come in. Don't stay outside. Come inside. Yeah. Even there's a chair here. If someone needs a chair, now we have an extra chair. So why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to this world? He wanted to. Premarasa Nirjas Kurite Ashwadan. He wanted to taste the essence of Premarasa. That is especially Radharani's love for him. So yesterday we were discussing three reasons. Three types of greed that Krishna had related to the love of Radharani. First, to know what is the glory of Radharani's love. What is the greatness of her love? Then, what is the sweetness in me, Krishna is thinking, that only Radhika can taste through her love. And then, thirdly, what is the happiness that Radharani experiences when she tastes my sweetness through the glories of her love. So, Prema Rasa Nirjas Khorite Ashwadan. Krishna appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu primarily for this reason. Hmm? But Anusangik, that means incidentally, Raga Marga Bhakti Loke Khorite Pracharan. He wanted to propagate within the world this path of Raga Nuga Bhakti. Hmm? Why? Rasikara Sheikha Krishna Paramakarun. What is causing? What is the cause of Krishna's Leela? His own Swabhav, his nature. And his nature has two prominent aspects, Rasikshaka Swabhav and Paramakarun Swabhav. Krishna is by nature the connoisseur of all the flavors of love, Rasikshaka. And also by nature Paramakarun, see Krishna is supremely merciful. 
So because he's Rasik Shekhar, Rasik Shekhar Swabhav, therefore Prima Rasa Nirjas Kriya Ashwadan. See, Krishna has appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to relish the mellows of Vadika's love for him. And because he's Paramakarun Swabhav, at the same time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is distributing through Harinam Sankirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. He is distributing the Raga Mark, the path of spontaneous devotion whereby the living entities can attain the service of the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika. So yesterday we described these three reasons for Mahaprabhu's appearance. But also, yesterday we discussed three desires of Srimati Radhirani which were not fulfilled in Krishna's Nikunja Lila, but became fulfilled in Gora Lila. So raise your hand if you remember what the three reasons were. The three desires. He knows. No. I said raise your hand if you know, not if you know someone who knows. <laughs> who can remember? Yes, come. I don't remember the first one. Yes. Because of the body. Yes. The yeah. body would uh, be the body of Shrimati Radhika. In Krishna Lila, Radhani used to cry. Yateshu jatu pancharanam buru hamstaneshu. Bhitashana priyadhi maikagasheshu. Tenata nimata sitadvyata tena kemsh. Kurpadi bibaravati di bhavadayo shamna. Krishna, how can you walk around in the forest in the dark? You may step on some short stones with your soft lotus feet. So Radhika wants to protect him, she wants to cover him, that he'll never feel any discomfort. But she could not do it. And in Goralila, Radharani has covered Krishna completely, from head to toe by her golden complexion. Even when he's falling on the ground in Kirtan, he doesn't feel anything. Huh? Covered by the complexion and the bhav, the, the absorbing the ecstasy of Radhika. This was the first thing. Then, second desire of Radhika. What was that? Does anyone know? <laughs> Try to sing back long, long time, 24 hours. <laughs> Open the heart. <laughs> yes. Um, actually, Radharani, sometimes she says to Lalita or Lalita to her, let's go to the marketplace and, and now make an announcement. <laughs> yeah. Radha and Krishna have a love affair like this and want to express it freely, so to say, yes. their love and the exchange. And in the form of Mahaprabhu, she can do it because she's together with him. Yes. In, in Krishna Leela, Radharani has to hide her feelings you know, all the time. Actually, it's the nature of gopis praying that they often hide their feelings. Even what you speak of in front of the mother-in-law and sister-in-law and husbands and so on, they must hide their feelings. But even with each other, Due to the, the crookedness of Prem, the Kutilya, uh, they hide also with each other and with Krishna also. But because they are also Rasik, although they try to hide, but it's detected. Mm -hmm. Just like if someone makes a crime, then a detective will come and find the clue. Aha! I know who has done this. Uh, so those who are very Rasik, they can pick up the clues and they understand Huh? That the very words which are used to hide the feeling actually reveals the feeling. Mm -hmm. So we gave some examples yesterday. Today we will give the most prominent, favorite example of Rupa Goswami of Avahitta Bhav. Avahitta means the concealing of emotions. In Krishna Lila Radharani has to conceal her emotions. She cannot glorify Krishna openly. Hmm? But in Gora Lila, she has come and Combined with Mahaprabhu, or we can say, in a separate form as Gadada Pandit. Then, Radharani is going with, uh, with Krishna everywhere and singing His glories openly. In Krishna Lila also, the nectar of Radhika's love for Krishna, when they are alone, is not known by anyone. Only the Manjuis, or some very close Sakis. But Radharani is very generous. She wants to share Love for Krishna with everyone. But in Krishna Lila it was not possible. But now in Gora Lila, 
अनारपिता चरिम चिरत करुणा या बाग दिए ना हाँ कलो समार पाई तुम उन्नत उज्जवल रसा इस वर्ड समार पाई तुम इस वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट नॉट आर पाई तुम द चैतन्य मापू इस ऑफरिंग द राधा दास्यम द द सर्विस ऑफ राधिका परिक्य रसा हाईस्ट मधुर रसा नो नॉट आर पिता समार पाई तुम समा मींस कंप्लीटली टू कंप्लीटली गिव Anyone is qualified or not qualified, Mapu doesn't care. Patra patra vichar nam kurte na swam param mikshite deha deya vimasha kopi na hiva kala patiksha prabhu. If you are patra, that means you are qualified. Mapu will give. If you are not qualified, he will give you a patra. Hmm? Patra means a receptacle. Hmm? One rich man was distributing kheer, sweet rice, and all the poor people came with their pots to get the free sweet rice. But one man was standing at a distance. He was, didn't stand in the queue. So that wealth man said, "Why are you standing there?" He said, "I don't have a pot." He said, "Don't worry, come here. I'll give you." And he gave him a pot, and then he filled it with sweet rice, and he was very happy. So in the same way, we may not be very qualified for bhakti, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates are very kind. They catch us. You're not qualified. Okay, I'll make you qualified, and they gradually make us qualified, and then fill our heart with the kheer. That is the sweet nectar of love for Radha and Krishna. So today we want to continue to discuss because yesterday we discussed three reasons for Krishna's appearance as Mahaprabhu, three desires that were fulfilled of Krishna, and three desires that were fulfilled of Radhika, and today our subject will be three desires of the Sakis, <laughs> of the friends of Radhika. But this is very, very. Shokshma. Shokshma. You know, it means subtle. Very subtle. Not so easy to understand. So you will have to listen with both ears, very carefully, and pray. Ah, oh, Guru Dev, please be merciful to me that this katha will go in my heart. I can understand one drop. <laughs> Then it's possible to understand. Otherwise. No one can understand anything. Yesterday, we heard how Sri Krishna he began to dance with all principles in Rasalila. But for so many internal reasons, Sri Krishna disappeared. And gopis were searching for him everywhere. They were unsuccessful, so they gathered together. They congregated on the bank of Yamuna, and together they began to sing. What does it mean? It means that the parama upai, that is the supreme method, the supreme remedy, the answer for that person who is looking, Krishna, where are you? Is Sankirtan, to be together with the devotees and sing loudly the glories of Krishna. It is the supreme method of attaining Krishna. Even the gopis of Brindavan, when they cannot find him, what do they do? Hari Nam Sankirtan. Gopis began to sing. Jayati te adhika janmana praja jayato. Discussed how gopis—they were hiding their true mood, because praying cannot be expressed openly. So they said to Krishna, "Krenu kuteshna, krendi richtayam." My heart is full of desire, burning me. Krishna, please place your lotus feet on my heart and mm, take away this burning sensation of desire. They're asking Krishna to come back for themselves, 
for themselves. Actually, they have no desire for themselves. They only think of Krishna's happiness. But by avahitta bhav, concealment of emotions, and because pain is not expressed directly, they ask for Krishna to come back as if they were asking for themselves. But really not. And then in the end, Radhika openly expressed what was her feeling. Mm -hmm. But, oh Krishna, please come back. Place your feet on my heart. Why? Not for my happiness. I only think what discomfort you may be feeling stepping on the stones in the forest. So she expressed love openly. But it was not Rasa Bas. It was not a fault. Why? Because the fire inside of separation was so strong. She had to open the door. If it's very hot, then they have to open the window. <laughs> huh? So because the separation from Krishna was so intense, then she could not hold it and she expressed her love. And at once Krishna reappeared there. Tasamavirama Pitam Sagvi Sakshan Manmata Manmata Manmat means who is so beautiful he churns the heart of everyone. So it's a name of Cupid. But here Manmat Manmata means one Manmat is Krishna. Krishna's beauty churns the heart of Radhika. And second Manmat is Radhika whose beauty churns the heart of Krishna. Each other. So when Krishna appeared there and Gopi saw him at once, one gopi ran forward and with her two hands held in her Kritanjali the ha one hand of Krishna, the right hand of Krishna. Another gopi came and took his left arm and put it over her shoulder. So one hand was being held by one gopi. So one, eh? Then another gopi came and with her folded palms put them by his mouth and Krishna had been chewing beto, hmm? tambu. So when you chew tambu, then your mouth becomes full of the, the crushed seeds and lots of saliva. So you have to... So she came like a dasi, like a maid, so I'm giving her hands, and Krishna put his chewed tambu in her hands. So she came in a very humble mood. And another gopi came and mm, took Krishna's right foot. She knelt down at his right foot and lifted his right foot and held it on her heart. So Krishna it was like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One hand, who took his hand? It was Chandravali. Because Chandravali was first one to come because she's very submissive. She has Gritta Sneha. So Chandravali took his first came, took his hand. Then Shamala, she is the Surit Paksh, friend of Radharani. She came, she didn't take his ha hand to hold his hand. Because she has some friendship with Radhani, she has a more bold mood. Why I should take his hand? His hand should hold me. So she took his hand and put it on her shoulder. Hmm? You see? So the exact what they do is exact expression of the type of love that they have. Huh? So then, so he has one hand here, one hand on Gopi. Left hand is on the ground. Left foot is on the ground. Because he's also leaning on her in the left foot. Then... Padma came, Padma, the friend of, Chan, of Chandravali, very humbly to take his tambul. And Shaibya, another friend of Chandravali, knelt down and took his right foot. So Krishna is like that. <laughs> One gopi on each limb of his body. But Srimad Bharatam said, and in the distance, one gopi was standing in the distance and shooting him with arrows of her glance. Hmm? She was frowning. She was quite, mm, she had a panai cope, a loving anger. Mm? So who was that? It was Shimati Radhika. <laughs> because Radhika, she has a, the Bahamiya Sobhav, that means uh, leftist, contrary mood. So if Krishna will disappear like that, put her into so much suffering, as if she's about to die, and then Krishna will come back and all is forgiven, no. That's not going to work. Krishna has to... <laughs> you have to learn a good lesson. Mm -hmm. So she didn't immediately run to him, but in that moment when Radhika didn't immediately run to him, Chandravali, Shaibya and Padma 
Chandravali and two of her sakis immediately came and took the limbs of Krishna. So now Radharani is really looking <laughs> with anger. What is he doing talking with that Chandravali? And Bamba and Shaila, because they are Radhika's rivals. They're the antipathy, Vipaksha Kopis. Mm-hmm. Always the, in rivalry with Radharani. So she's staying at a distance. She's not ready yet to forgive him. And on top of that, he's associating with the Vipaksha, the anti-party. So Radharani shoot him. Then Shukadev Goswami part says that one gopi was standing at some distance and looking directly at the face of Shri Krishna with unblinking eyes and feeling so many ecstasies. Who was that? No, not Ashara. It was Lalita. Lalita Saki. Now Lalita Saki is very mm, contrary also. More contrary than Radharani. Not only contrary, she's Bama Prakara. That means she's not only contrary but vocal about it as well. She speaks sometimes very harsh words. Huh? But Radha Mukund Patasambhava Karma Bindu Ne Manchan Opakarani Kutta Deha Laksha Utung Uttunga Visat Pragalvam Devim Gunai Sulalitam Lalitam Nama Rupa Goswami Pad said that if one drop of perspiration will come on the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna then the Lita to take away that inconvenience runs there as if with a thousand bodies just to wipe away that drop of perspiration Uttunga Saurida Vishesh She has Saurida Vishesh very intense friendship Mm. And under the control of that intense friendship, she can be very bold. She can chastise Krishna. She can chastise Radharani even. Mm. So this is Lalita's nature. But the meeting of Radha and Krishna is as if all festivals throughout the whole year, there are many festivals, Janmastami, Radhastami, mm. Gurpani, mm. many festivals throughout the year. But for Lalita Saki, the meeting of Radha Krishna is like all festivals of the Holy at once. She feels so much joy. So now, Lalita is looking at Krishna and noticing that Krishna is accepting the service of Chandravali, Padma and Shaibya and noticing that Krishna is noticing Radharani is seeing him, accepting their service. And she's shooting him with the arrow of her glance and Krishna is trying to be nice to them and at the same time, inwardly, he's panicking. <laughs> and due to this panic, many sanctuary bars, many waves of emotion, mm, shyness, some fear, restlessness, many emotions are coming uh, in the heart of Krishna at the same time. And because these emotions are coming, they're showing on his face. And the leech is looking at Krishna's face and drinking that nectar. Just see how he's so scared. <laughs> how he's so worried. How he's in so much anxiety. He can't even hide it in front of the Chandravali and others. And so she's... Because Lalita is rasik. So these are sanchi bhavs, these emotions that Krishna is feeling. It's due to his love for Radhika. That Radhika is Brindavana Shri, Brindavana Chakravartini. You know, in a wheel, the axle in the middle is called the Chakravarti. Because everything rotates around it. So Radharani is called Brindavana Chakravartini. That means in Brindavan, everything rotates around Shimati Radhika, including Krishna. <laughs> so Lalita is looking and relishing the rasa of Krishna's panic. Mm-hmm. Another gopi, she looked and then she closed her eyes. And then she was trembling and sattvic bars came on her body like a yogi in meditation when he's realizing the paramatma. That was Vishakha. Why? Because when she saw that Krishna had come back. And so now there's a possibility that Radha and Krishna will be together in a beautiful Nikunj. She became so overwhelmed with that desire because that's her only desire. Hmm? That's, the only, that's why we put on this tilak every day. You know? One side of your tilak represents Krishna and mm, on his left side, Shimati Radhika and his toss leaf represents Vrindavan. 
So these two lines don't touch, but they touch here. That means Radha and Krishna meet in Vrindavan. Huh? So this tilak is the emblem of the sakis of Radhika that they don't want anything. They have no desire. Anyabla sta shunyam. Hmm? That's why you have to clean out the middle. That means get out. Anyabla sta Get out. All desires go. Hmm? Sakis only wants that Radha and Krishna will meet together. So when, hmm, after Krishna had returned, hmm, then Vishaka was so overwhelmed, oh Radha and Krishna should meet together in the Kunj. And she took the form of Krishna into her heart through her eyes. Where Radhika is always living in her heart. And then just as when Vishaka brings Radha Krishna to a kunj and pushes them inside, then she closes the door. <laughs> so when she took Radha Krishna into the kunj of her heart through the door of her eyes, then she closed the door. And his eyes closed. Understand? <laughs> and then eyes closed and relishing the... Even they did not meet yet, but she's already experienced the prospect. Radha Krishna now meeting in kunj. Close the door, and her hairs are standing on the door. So in this way, each and every gopi, according to their mood, they received Krishna. So, mm, so so then some of the maid servants of those gopis they took their utriya hmm? so utriya hmm. because they had been crying the tears had washed the kajal the black eyeliner from their eyes and their tears fell onto their breast and washed the kumkum from their breast and then it fell onto their veil so their veils were fragrant and beautified by the streaks of kumkum and kaja. And those very anchals, those veils, they put on the ground one, two, three, so many of them because they're very thin. And they made so many veils in the pile, made an asana, a sitting place for Sri Krishna. And they invited Krishna. Please come. Sit down. So Sri Krishna sat down there. Tadashna Lada Viduta Ridrujo. They felt so much joy seeing Krishna now Krishna had come back. Ridruja, that the pain of separation within their heart was washed away. Manoratantam. And their desires, they felt, oh now our desires are, are fulfilled that Krishna has returned. And they felt so much joy from this. How? Like the Sruteo Yatayayu, just as the Srutis. Felt fulfilled. What does that mean? It means that those gopis who put down the ancha and invited Krishna to sit down were in their previous life the Vedas personified. Dharmam to Sakshat Bhagatam Pranitam. The Vedas emanate from the breathing of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So when Lord Narayan breathes, <sighs> With his every breath, Vedas come out. And sometimes Vedas come out from the flapping of the wings. Sama Veda comes from the flapping of the wings of Garuda. So in this way, Vedas are appearing. In the previous day of Lord Brahma, the Vedas personified, saw this beautiful Leela of Krishna. And they saw the gopis putting the anchors on the ground and inviting Krishna to sit down. And they thought, I want to serve like that. Nibrita Marun Manakshad Yoga Yujori Dhyan Munayaru Pasita Dariopi Yos Maranat Stiaru Rugendra Bhoga Bujidanda Visakti Deo Vyama Pichasama Samadeshangri Saroja Sudha. In the end of the tenth canto, chapter eighty seven, the Vedas personified offering prayers. They say there are many yogis doing pranayama and meditating, controlling their senses for thousands of years. And they may attain mukti liberation, to enter into Brahman. But the demons who hate Krishna and are killed by Krishna, they easily attain that without doing any sadhana at all. So what's the use of yoga sadhana? If even a demon can attain the same destination, 
So the Vedas person says, no, 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 we're not doing any yoga sadhana. Then what will you do? Just as the gopis are always thinking at every moment of being embraced by the strong arms of Krishna. Puja danda visakta means Krishna's arms are like snakes. No one gets embraced by a snake willingly. Hmm? Only if you're walking in the forest and then by surprise a python hanging on a branch just drops down and <laughs> grabs you and fight. Hmm? So gopis say Krishna's arms are like python. <laughs> Why? Because they're always dreaming. Uh, my mother-in-law told me to fetch some water and I'll go to the forest with the pot on my head to bring the water. But when I'm going through, perhaps that black snake Krishna will be there and he'll jump out and grab me. Hmm? But gopis, because of their bhamya sobhav, their contrary nature, no, no. Mama sprisha. Mama sprisha means don't, don't touch me. That means don't, don't touch me. Mama sprisha. And they fight with Krishna. But you cannot overcome the power of a python. Alas, alas. So the gopis have to surrender in the end. Mm -hmm. So the Vedas say, oh, forget this yoga sadhana. We are going to meditate like branch gopis. And by being absorbed in completely following their mood, we attained spiritual forms like this. So, these gopis who put down the asana, they were the Vedas from the previous day of Lord Brahma. Uh, and now, Manoratantam, the desires of the Vedas became fulfilled. Then one may say, but if all the Vedas become gopis, we'll run out of Vedas. <laughs> no, but it's not like that because Lord Narayan is always breathing. Garuda is always flapping his hands. And they have, to, they have to do this because they have to produce more and more Vedas. Because in every day of Lord Brahma, some of the Vedas see the leela of the gopis and say, I want to do that. Forget this yoga sadhana. <laughs> And then they become gopis and the next day of Lord Brahma, the new Vedas see it. And then they think, oh, I want to do that. And in this way, uh, again and again and again, in each day of Lord Brahma, when Krishna performs his lila, the uh, new Vedas are becoming gopis. So, what is knowledge? People, when they want to get transcendental knowledge, they study the Vedas. But the Vedas are studying the gopis. <laughs> <laughs> The, the Vedas are like a desire tree. So all people go to the Vedas. Oh, give me money. Give me nice husband, wife. Give me children. Give me health. Let me go to heaven. They're always asking the Vedas for something to fulfill their desire. Hmm? But who will fulfill the desires of the Vedas? The Vedas' desires become fulfilled only when they become the maidservants of Brajgopis and they make the asana for Sri Krishna. So, anyone cannot be satisfied uh, by being independent from Sri Krishna. But the highest happiness, the greatest satisfaction comes from the service of Radha and Krishna. And the Vedas themselves, they are the witness. That is the conclusion of the Vedas. If someone is wondering, what's, what's the conclusion of all this? This is the conclusion the service of Radha and Krishna. So then Krishna sat down there and when he sat down, a very beautiful scene unfolded. Shukadeva Goswami says, Sabhajayitva tadananga deepanam Sahasali lakshana vibrama bruva samsparshanena anka Kritangri hastayo samstuta ishat kupita babashire. This verse has been chosen by Vosa Shukadev Goswami, has been chosen by Rupa Goswami to illustrate the meaning of Avahitabhav. It's the most excellent example of how Braj Gopis try to conceal their emotions. You see, Krishna has, it seems, been very cruel to them by disappearing and putting them in such pain of separation. And now he's come back. If Krishna thinks, okay, Nikunja will ask. No, 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 no. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Not going to happen. Gopis need some answers. Krishna should at, at least admit that he's done wrong. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Once there was a young Brahmin boy, he came to his father and he said, 
my dear father, I want to get married. His father said, say sorry. The boy said, what? He said, say sorry. He said, but I haven't done anything wrong. He said, just say sorry. Uh -huh. He said, but why? why? I, I had, oh, I just, I'm just asking you a question. What have I done wrong? Just say sorry. And then the boy just said, oh, okay, I'm sorry. And his father said, okay, now you're qualified to be married. <laughs> So, the Leela is not going anywhere. Just Krishna, just sit down. Hmm? We need to have a conversation. Hmm? So, Shukadev Goswami is saying, Subhajetwa Tadananga Deepanam. Subhajetwa means, Braj Gopis treated Krishna with the greatest honor, utmost honor. Hmm? So, yesterday we were discussing where there's love, what is there? Criticism, Ninda. And where there's honor, this is <laughs> means there should be there's some problem perhaps. So Subhaga Jaitwa Tadananga Deepanam. Ananga means the god of love, Cupid. Especially here it means Prem. And Deepanam means a lamp. The lamp of love. That is when Sri Krishna sat down, then his beauty ignited the lamp of love in the hearts of Gopis. And also, just as light is spreading, internally their love is spreading also. And really, they want to serve Him and enjoy sweet pastimes with Him. But they have some man, some pranaikop, some loving anger is there at that time. But they don't want to show Krishna that they have the loving anger. So what are they doing? Sahasa, Lilakshana, Vibrama Bruva. Sahas means gopis have come around him, they're smiling. Sahas are all are smiling. Krishna mm -hmm. sees the smiles, I'll say, oh. <laughs> uh -huh. Sahasa, Lilakshana, and they're glancing at him with very beautiful glances. And Vibrama Bruho, their eyebrows are dancing as well. So they sh outwardly they're showing that they're very happy and very pleased with him. Hmm? And also samsparshanena means, sparsha means touching and samsparsha means completely touching him. In other words, they've surrounded him. Krishna is sitting, kritangri, uh, kritangri hastaiho means kr Krishna is sitting, he's crossed his legs and he's put his hands like this in his lap. So Krishna is sitting like this. And on all sides, Braj Gopis come, and one Braj Gopi is massaging his shoulders, one is massaging his hand, one is massaging his arm, one is massaging the other hand, the other arm, someone massaging his leg, someone massaging his feet, like this, and someone massaging his neck, his head, and all Gopis at the same time, they're touching and massaging him. And they are the Samstuta, Samstuta Isha Pranaya Kopita Bibhasire. Some stuta means they're glorifying him. Oh, Krishna is so soft. Everyone, one Saki said, Oh, Saki's hand is so soft. Oh, Saki's feet are so soft. Oh, Saki's arm is so soft. Oh, Saki's shoulder is so soft. Krishna is listening. What does it mean? It means everyone's body has some hardness. But Krishna has no hardness. Oh, Saki is softer than fresh butter. That means no place in Krishna's body, on the outside, is there any harshness or any hardness. That means all the hardness of Krishna has accumulated in his heart. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> They're not saying. But by Bhyanshan Krishna, by implication. Oh, his leg is so soft, his hand is so soft. He is like butter. Krishna's listening. Oh, oh. <laughs> now I'm in big trouble. <laughs> So Samstuta Isha Kupita Babashira Gopis are speaking to Krishna. Oh Krishna, before we thought that you were a cowherd boy. You are just a cowherd boy. But now we know that you're a pandit, a great scholar. Well, we thought we could ask you some questions. <laughs> <laughs> and they're massaging him, Krishna. Oh, oh. <laughs> 
What did they do? Go to do next? <laughs> eh? Why did Christmas? Why do Gopi say that? Now we know you're a scholar. Because when they left everything and came to the forest at night, and Krishna met with them, then Krishna said, "Swaga tamba mahabaga, priyam kim karavami ba, brajasya navayam, kachit bhuta gamana karanam, raja nesh gauru rupam gauru satvani sevita." Pratiyata brajam ne haste ham stribi sumadhamaha. Krishna told, "What are you doing here? Why did you come?" They're thinking, you called us. <laughs> and now you're asking, why did we come? Is there some problem in the village? Did you come to see the beautiful scenery? You've seen it, now go home. If a woman wants to go to heaven, she has to serve her husband. Without duplicity. Ah, <laughs> my without duplicity. <laughs> in Hindi they're saying, Das Tara Ki Bat Kahana. To speak ten different things, all different things. Someone is speaking, but everything there's ten different things they're saying, and none of them are uh, congruent. It's all nothing is in, even nothing is consistent. So in this way, Krishna spoke ten verses, and nothing was consistent. Mm-hmm. So remembering how Krishna was speaking when they arrived, they said, "Oh, we thought you were just knew about grazing cows, but now we know that you're a pandit. We want to ask you some questions." So this moment when gopis are praising Krishna, massaging Krishna, smiling, glancing of Krishna, this is the excellent example Rupa Goswami gives of Abhahitabhav, the concealment of emotion. So you should know that Abhahitabhav, the concealment of emotion has three components. First, Hetu, the cause. Then Gopya, the emotion which is hidden. And then Gopana, the emotion which is used to hide the emotion which is hidden. Is it clear? Hetu, Gopya and Gopana. First, what is the cause of the concealment of emotion? Secondly, what is the emotion that you are concealing? And thirdly, what is the emotion that you use to hide the actual emotion? These are the three components of Avahittava. So here, for Braja Gopis, the cause of the Havahitabhav is the kutilya, crookedness. Their brain is, moves like a snake. And the emotion that they're trying to hide is asuya, hostility. They're actually feeling some hostility to Krishna. They're feeling some loving anger towards Krishna. They're feeling amarsha. Amarsha means indignation. How could Krishna treat us like this? They feel quite indignant. So, due to asuya, hostility, amarsha, indignation, and they are, sorry, these are their emotions, and due to crookedness, they want to hide it. So, how do they hide it? With a harsha vaikalya. Harsha vaikalya means a flurry of joy. You know, if you're, if you're joyful, you're in a hurry, and you're really smiling, and you do things quickly. So gopis have come and surrounded Krishna and massage him and glorify him and smiling and speaking with him so nicely in a flurry. That's the emotion that they're using to hide their hostility and their indignation because of crookedness. So now gopis are going to do a test for Krishna because he's a bandit. So then they said to Krishna, now remember, they feel hurt that he abandoned them. And they want Krishna basically to say sorry and admit that he did wrong. But because of crookedness, they're hiding that and trying to be really nice to him. But they can't let him get away so easily. So that's why this question is coming out. Bajato nu bajante eka 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 dviparyayam nu bayamscha bajante eka Eitan no bruhi sadhu boho. Gopis are saying, Krishna, there are three types of lovers. One, bhajanti, bhajanta nu bhajanti eka. Bhajato nu bhajanti eka means the person who exactly reciprocates with the other person. Just like 
there's a feast and you go to someone's mat because there's a feast and at the end of the feast they give an envelope out to everyone then afterwards you, you go home and you open the envelope and there's 51 rupees 50 rupee note and a 1 rupee note right? <laughs> everyone knows oh, it can be 50, 100, 1000 whatever always an odd number so then you remember 51 then when there's a festival at your mat and, someone, and that person comes then you think how much shall I give him oh he gave me 51 I also give 50 and 1 okay. huh? this is reciprocation only huh? this is not love those who just reciprocate with others this is not love they're merchants that is business no love at all no relationship hmm? just like once one man, in his family, his wife gave birth to a, a son. And to celebrate, he bought ladus and he was sending him to the ladus to his neighbors. So he put the ladus in a box and sent it to his neighbor. The neighbor received the box. And when he opened the box, he saw ladu was there, but it was broken. It's a sweet, it tastes the same. It's going to be broken when you chew it anyway. But anyway, the ladu was broken. Huh? Then after some time, his wife also had a child. Huh? And when his child gave birth, then he also bought so many ladus. Then he took a ladu in the box to send to that neighbor. But then he saw, oh, and he broke the ladu. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first type. Bajatonu bajanteka. Go be saying. There are three types of lovers. One reciprocates. Exactly. The second type. Hmm? That person, if someone loves them or not, if someone reciprocates with them or not, but anyway they give love. Hmm? And the third type, if someone loves them or not, but they never reciprocate at all. <laughs> <laughs> so there are three types of lovers. Please Krishna, can you explain this Prem Tattva? <laughs> Explain the truth of love. <laughs> this is good. Understand what's going on. They're really upset with him. <laughs> and they're trying to be nice. But it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so this question is coming out. <laughs> but this question is not about this. It's about him. <laughs> huh? Bhagavatam, you can learn so much female psychology. <laughs> Where does this psychology come from? Comes from the spiritual world. Hmm? It's, it's a shadow reflection, not exactly the same, but everything here is the reflection of the spiritual world. So then Krishna is getting the massage. <laughs> He's thinking, how can I answer this question? And gopis are thinking, we have set one trap for him. Because, first of all, Krishna cannot be in the first category. Because we love him and he ran away from us. So he's not in the first category. Huh? And he cannot be in the second category. One who loves whether he is loved or not. Because we always love him. So we have no chance to find out what would it be like if we didn't love him. Because we always love him. So he cannot be in the second category. So he must be in the third category. Hmm? So the third category, that's the person who he, uh, someone loves him or doesn't love him, but he never reciprocates. So those are of four types. The first type is called Atmaram. Atmaram. Like Shukadev Goswami. Shukadev Goswami, uh, before he became Vaishnav, before hearing the Bhagavatam, he was absorbed in Brahman. Hmm? He was just, his body was walking around, he didn't know whether he was dressed or undressed. So he was naked. Shukadev Goswami was walking naked. He doesn't know if it's day or night or anything. Only Swabhavas to Prabhav Ratate. His body is walking, but he's absorbed in Brahman. Hmm? His father was chasing after him. Oh, Haputa, oh my son, oh my son. Hmm? And he went past the lake, and there were some young girls who were bathing naked in the lake. And when Shukadeva Swami walked past, then they didn't bother. They didn't cover themselves or anything. 
But then when his old father, Vyasadev, came with long white beard, then they became shy and covered themselves. So Vyasadev, he couldn't catch up with Shukadeva Goswami, but he wondered, why? It's a strange reaction. This boy is very young and handsome and naked, and you did not cover yourself, you felt no shyness. But then I came, and I'm an old man, old enough to be your great-grandfather, <laughs> huh? and you, be, you cover yourself and become shy, why? Those girls, they said, oh, because he, he cannot tell the difference between Larki and Lakri. Hmm? In, in Hindi, Larki means girl, and Lakri means firewood. Huh? He doesn't see any difference between the body of a young woman and a piece of dead wood. Because he's absorbed in Brahman for him. And it, so he's completely atmara and self-satisfied. He doesn't need anything else. So the first category of person, love him or don't love him, but he never reciprocates. Atmara muni. Atmara muneyo. Nigranta apirukame. Nigranta means no knot of ego. And granta means scripture also. So nigranta, they are beyond the rules and regulations of the scriptures. So that's the first category. Then the second one is aptakam. Aptakam is like um, Janak Maharaj, the father of Sita Devi. He's a king. He sees the world, but he's Brahman realized. All his desires have been fulfilled and he doesn't need anything. So the first one doesn't see the world, he's absorbed in Brahman. The second one, he's absorbed in Brahman, but he can interact with the world, like Janak Maharaj, called Aptakam, desires are fulfilled. The third type is called the Akritagya. Akritagya means an ungrateful person. You do something for them, but they forget about it. Uh, they say, oh, thank you very much. And then after a few days, they forget. What did you do for me lately? Mm -hmm. So, ungrateful persons, they are in this third category. And then the fourth is called Guru Drohi. Guru Drohi, this is the worst. <laughs> Drohi's enemy, who becomes an enemy of his own guardian. Like, if there's a child, and the parents love the child so much and take care of him so much, but the child, he goes against the parents. So, he's Guru Drohi. If the, child, if the parents mistreat him, that's Guru Jori Sahetu with the cause. And that couldn't, that's not so bad. It's bad but not so bad. But if the parents are so nice and they have, he has no cause to go against them, is Ahetu Guru Drohi, going against his guardian, going against the ones who love him for no reason. That is terrible. Terrible. Otherwise, Guru Drohi can be in another uh, category third type of Guru Drohi is uh, the Guru who is a Drohi. Instead of being an enemy towards your guardian, you are a guardian of someone else. They are helpless and you go against them. This is very bad also. So, the gopis were thinking, why did we love Krishna? We came to serve him so much and for no reason at all he just disappeared and left us alone in the forest at night putting us in so much pain, that means that Krishna is a Guru Drohi. For no reason at all, he goes against those who are in his shelter. And that is, if there's a cause, it can be understood. But for no cause, to go against those who are in your shelter, this is completely perverse and terrible. And that's what Krishna did to us. So the gopis have set a trap here, that see Krishna will have to Admit to them that he is in this category. That he is Akritagya, that he is ungrateful, and that he is a Guru Drohi. Yeah? So, how does Krishna come out from this trap? Yeah? We'll explain. We'll explain maybe tomorrow. Huh? But today, today we're on another... I just want to stop there because we're going to... What is our subject today? Three reasons of the Three desires of the Sakis of Radharani, which were fulfilled in Gora Lila. So we just have to pause Krishna Lila right there. Krishna is worried. Gopis have set the trap. And we'll continue tomorrow. But here it's revealed, it's, it is revealed that in Krishna Lila, Gopis have, the Sakis of Radhika, have some unfulfilled desires. 
They are asking here, what kind of love are you, Krishna? Because they have a doubt. They think that Krishna's love is not pakka. It's not fully mature. He has some atmaramata, some self-satisfaction in him. You see, in Rasa Tattva, Krishna is the Vishai of praying, the object of love. And gopis are the ashram of love. Hmm? Now, we see that gopis love Krishna and Krishna loves gopis. So why say Krishna is the Vishai and gopis are the ashram? Why not say gopis are the Vishai of praying, Krishna's praying? And Krishna is the abode of love. And Krishna is the... So why say Krishna is the Vishai and gopis are the ashram of rasa? Huh? It's a very deep question. For those who understand the question, if you have studied some Rasa Tattva, then after some time you might think, but they love each other. Why is Krishna called the Vishai Vigraha and Gopisa Ashray Vigraha? Yeah? The reason is this. Gopis' love for Krishna is pure. And Krishna's love for Braj Gopis is pure. Everything that they do is to please each other. Hmm? Everything that they do is to please each other. So when hmm, Radhika meets with Krishna, when she sees Krishna, she becomes overjoyed. When Krishna embraces her, when Krishna speaks to her, whatever Krishna does, then it gives so much joy to Radhika. And when she feels that joy, her face begins to glow. And she becomes more beautiful. But the happiness that she experiences, she never thinks, mm, this is for me. But rather, that happiness should give happiness to Krishna. And she offers her happiness back to Krishna. Anything the gopis do is not for their own happiness. The happiness is just automatic. For example, if there's a feast, and there's a very special preparation, you can get from only one place in Braj Mandal called Naresh Deri in Mathura. And this preparation is called Makan Samosas. Huh? We got some of this very rare preparation to offer to Govardhan last year at the Govardhan Puja. Can you imagine Makan Samosa? That doesn't mean a samosa that has Makan butter inside. It means that the samosa is made of Makan. In other words, the filling has some coconut and elaichi, cardamom and different things inside and the outer form of the samosa is made from butter. So when butter is very cold, it's put in ice water, it goes a little bit hard and then you can roll it out and actually make a samosa from the butter. But you have to keep it in cool water. Otherwise, if you take it out and you leave it there for a few minutes, it will just... It, it, it will be a filling in a puddle of butter. It won't be a makan samosa anymore. So, if during a feast someone tells you, Oh, Prabhu, you distribute these makan samosas. Right? Now your purpose is what? Your purpose is to give everyone one delicious butter samosa. It's not your purpose to have a greasy hand. But automatically when you're serving the samosas, your hand becomes greasy. So in the same way, Radharani and gopis just come to please Krishna. But incidentally, they cannot help it. They feel so much joy. Understand? But that joy that they feel, then they offer back to Krishna for his pleasure. Huh? You see, that's very important. Because, for example, if I give you a makan samosa, hmm? then if you smile, you ha it gives you happiness, so you smile. But this smile also gives me happiness. Huh? If I give you a Makan Samosa, no. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Prabhu. Huh? No. This is giving you happiness, but then the happiness that you feel should give me happiness also. So in the same way, Radhika meets with Krishna, she feels joy and she begins to glow and her glow and all happiness she offers back to Krishna. <coughs> And when Krishna meets with Radhika, and Radhika says, Krishna feels happiness. He feels so much joy. He doesn't want. He only wants to please Radhika. But just as butter will stick to your hand when you 
purpose is to serve. In the same way, Krishna, his love is pure. He only wants to please Radhika. But automatically he feels joy. And that joy he offers back to Radhika 99.99%. Yeah. 99.99% but 0.001 <laughs> Krishna keeps for himself why does he do that? Hmm? because he has some kusanskar kusanskar means bad, sums, bad impression <laughs> why do we behave the way that we do? because of kusanskar some bad impressions we have from a previous life. So Krishna, he has so many incarnations. He's Bhagavan. He's appearing in so many forms. Hmm? And even in Krishna Leela, sometimes, he has to be Bhagavan. Right? If Nanda Maharaj is being eaten by a snake, and everyone is calling Krishna, Krishna help, Krishna has to run there and save Nanda Maharaj from the snake. If the coward boys have been swallowed by Agasura, Krishna has to go in the mouth. And so from time to time, even Krishna... He'll have to hmm? be aware. Yoga Maya will make him aware. Because Krishna was thinking, I am Nanda Nanda, son of Nanda Maharaj. But sometimes Yoga Maya has to make him aware. I am Bhagavan. Hmm? And that leaves a samskar, an impression, small impression. Hmm? Of what? Bhagavan is Atmaram, self-satisfied. So because see, Krishna has a small, small kusanskar, bad impression of being self-satisfied, Though everything he does is for Radhika and it makes her happy and her happiness makes him happy. But when he feels that happiness that he wasn't looking for because his love is pure, he offers it all back to Radhika but he keeps a little bit for himself because of that kusanskar. And gopis who are very expert in Ras, they know this. <laughs> they know. That's why Krishna is the Vishai of Rasa. <laughs> they know this and they feel sorry for him. Why? Because unless you give everything, you cannot feel the full happiness of brain. Brain is the greatest happiness and the gopis only want Krishna's happiness. And they feel that oh, we want your happiness but you cannot feel full happiness. Because of this you have a little bit of atmaramata. And that's why they sat him down and they asked this question. What kind of... There are three types of lovers. Please explain it, Krishna. That means which type are you? Huh? Then... Oh, so here, when Sri Krishna appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then he has no Atmaravata at all. Nothing for himself. He cannot be satisfied even for a moment. But every moment he's feeling separation. Na prema gandosti durhapa meharo. Kandami sobhagya param prakashita. I don't know what love is without seeing the son of Nanda Maharaj. Why am I staying alive? Because now Krishna is absorbed in Ratapath. All his Atmaramata has gone. He has completely the... It is said that the pure brain is, has the quality of Atripti. Never satisfied. Never ever satisfied. Even if Radharani gives full pleasure to Krishna, she's still worried that perhaps he's not fully happy. And she goes in a state of confusion. That is called the... Tatsoke Pyati Shankaya. Tatsoke. Even when Krishna is fully happy, Radharani is worried. I think he is not fully happy. What more can I do? And that never ends. That state of Atripti being dissatisfied is one of the aspects, this above the nature of praying. So Krishna did not experience it because of this little Atmaravata. But now Krishna has become Goranga Mahaprabhu, always weeping. Yuga etam nimeshena chakshusha pravishayetam shunyayetam jagat saravam govinda virahename. Oh Govinda, where are you? One moment is like a thousand years in separation from you. So then gopis, they became happy in Goralila. Oh, now Krishna understands praying. Now he's experiencing full happiness. No Atmaramata at all. 
Second desire, they thought that Krishna was akutagya, mm, ungrateful. Mm, ungrateful. And you can see this. Many, many, uh, long time, long time later, Krishna has gone to Mathura. Krishna then went to Dwarka. And then there was a time of the solar eclipse. And the Krishna and the residents of Dwarka came to Kurukshetra and the bridge buses came there. So when Krishna met with the Prajagopis, what did he say to them? Apyavadayata Asman Swit Akritagya Vishankaya Nunambutani Bhagavan Yunakti Vyunakti Cha. He said, O oh, Gopis, do you hold me in contempt? Having the being suspicious that I am ungrateful to you. So many years later, Krishna is asking them this question. Do you still think that I am akritagya, that I am ungrateful? Don't think I am ungrateful. Why? No, no. Bhagavan vinakti nakti vinakti cha. Krishna said. You think that I left you and it's my fault. No, only Bhagavan. God brings all the living entities together and separates them. So it's not my fault. It's Bhagavan's fault. So Krishna said this at Kurukshetra. Also, after all Krishna Leela was almost over and Krishna was about to leave this world, Krishna was giving teaching to Uddhav. And he said to Uddhav, about the qualities of pure devotees, higher devotees, Mahabhagavat, and three levels of Mahabhagavat also. And when he got to the highest devotees, then naturally Krishna had to speak about the gopis. So he speaks about the gopis to Uddhav, just before leaving this world, in the context of who are the highest devotees. So at that time, see Krishna said to Uddhav, Ramena Sadam Maturam Pranite Swapalkina maya no sakta chittaha vigada bhavena na medi yogo tivadriya tivadriyanyam dadrisha sukaya means oh when I was in Vrindavan Akrura came Swapalkina the son of Swapalka and Akrura and Balaram together they put me on the chariot and they took me to Mathura and at that time when I was in Mathura then Braj Gopi's those hearts are deeply attached to me. Hmm? Then in separation, they could not find even the slightest happiness at all. Srila Sanatana Goswami reveals the inner meaning of these words of Krishna. The meaning is this. When Krishna was in Mathura, he called Uddhav and told Uddhav, Gachchuddhava Brajam Somya Pitru Napitimabaha Gopi Nammad Yoga Dimmat Sandesha Vimucha Uddhav go to Braja and give some consolation to uh, our parents. And also, I have some messages. I want you to deliver these messages to the gopis who are feeling so much separation from me. Dharyatya Chikritschena Pranam Praya Kachanchana Pratyagamana Sandesha Balavo Me Madatmika O Uddhav those gopis in Vrindavan, somehow or other, somehow or other, they hold on to their pran and stay alive. They are about to die in separation from me, but they just about stay alive because they're thinking, if we die, the news will go to Krishna. And if Krishna hears that we have died, Krishna will cry, so we have to stay alive. So somehow or other, gopis are staying alive. And Krishna said to Uddhav, Balavo me madatnaka. They stay alive only because mm, they have, I told them, I say, when I was leaving, I sent a message to them, I will return. I will return. So by this hope, they are staying alive. Uddhav didn't want to leave Krishna. I am hearing. Mathura with Krishna, why do I have to leave Krishna and go to this branch place? What's, why, what's the use of going to a village? So Krishna is saying, Balavo me madatmika. You should understand, as they are struggling to stay alive, madatmika, these gopis are my soul. So I am also struggling to stay alive. 
And if you will go to Vrindavan and pacify them with my messages, when they are pacified, then my heart will be pacified. This is the inner meaning. Because why? Malavo me madatmika. My gopis, they are my soul. So by these words, Krishna was telling Uddhav that as gopis feel pain, I also feel pain. But then many years later, when Krishna was about to leave this world, again he's telling Uddhav instructions just before leaving and describing different levels of devotees and comes to the gopis. And now by this verse, Ramena Sadam Maturam Pranite. See, Krishna is admitting to Uddhav, actually what I told you before is not true. I am not suffering equally to gopis. They are suffering much worse than me. Mm -hmm. They cannot see any means of happiness anywhere. That's why my name is Madhusudan. You know why Krishna's name is Madhusudan? That he killed the Madhu demon? Okay, this is for the Vaikuntha Basis, the residents of Vaikuntha, maybe the residents of Mathura and Dwarka, but not for Bharata Basis. Madhu Dwish. Krishna is the enemy of Madhu. Madhu Beach, Madhu Dwish, Madhu Sudha. Here Madhu means honey or happiness. Krishna is the enemy of happiness. The enemy of happiness, yes? Uh, you see, you have all come here to hear about Krishna because you think it will make you happy. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Pida, Vina, Vakala, Kuta, Katataga, Vasya, Neva, Sano, Nisyan, Dena, Mudam, Sudama, Durima, Hankara, Sanko, Chana, Prima, Sundari, Nanda, Nanda, Pro, Jagati, Asyantare, Gyayante, Spudamasya, Vakrama, Drais, Te Naiva, Vikrantaya, Purnamasi, Devi, said, Oh. If you have brain for Krishna, this love is like nectar, but mixed with deadly poison. <laughs> and you will suffer like anything. So Krishna's name is Madhusudan, because those who develop love for Krishna, they will never be happy ever again. <laughs> never. They'll have no happiness, not one drop, not one atom. Forever, with no escape. Huh? Radharani herself has said it. Who is that person who first put a drop of Harikata, Krishna Kata in my ear? If I could find that person, then I would <laughs> teach them such a lesson that they'll never do the same thing to anyone. <laughs> if one drop of Harikata will go in your ear, you become mad. Hmm? You'll leave your home. Your family will be crying, where did he go? Huh? <laughs> He's gone to Vrindavan, huh? And you go to Vrindavan, when you get to Vrindavan, there you cannot find Krishna, so you'll be crying also. So family crying on one side and you're crying on the other. <laughs> Everyone crying! <laughs> so Krishna is Madhusudan, beware. <laughs> don't try to have bhakti, don't try to have praying for Krishna, this is a bish, kalkut bish, deadly, deadly poison. Hmm? So Krishna admitted to Uddhav hmm, in the last days, Oh Uddhav, I told you I am suffering like gopis, but actually I am not suffering like gopis. They are suffering much more than me. And I, they are very soft-hearted, they are very loving and they are very generous. But I have katurta, I am very harsh and I am a katakya. I am ungrateful. Krishna was feeling before he left, I am ungrateful. Why did I leave with him? So, Gopis, this desire that Krishna's Akritagya, that he would overcome this, was not fulfilled in Brajalila. But in Goralila, it was fulfilled. Why? Because in Goralila, Krishna was remembering. I told Radharani, Na pariyam nera vajya sanujam swasadu kuttyam bubudaya shapiva yamma vajan dudjaya gaya sankala samrishita dva pratiyatu sadhana Radhika, I cannot repay you. I cannot repay you. Why? Because even if I try to repay you while I'm serving you, your love is increasing. It's like I'm, I'm in debt to you, I've taken a loan and I'm trying to pay you back. But the interest is so high, I'm trying to pay but the interest is going up. So what to speak of pay back the loan, I, actually I cannot even pay the interest. 
on your love. So Krishna is eternally indebted to the gopis. So if you are in debt to someone, you owe them, but you, there's no way of paying. And that person is very kind to say, okay, forget about the debt. Just forget about it. We'll just write it off. Huh? Then what is your duty? Then it's your duty to glorify that person to everyone. Oh, he's so merciful, so kind. So see Krishna saying, oh, gopis, I cannot repay you. But gopis, they told her, don't, don't worry about this. So it's Krishna's duty now to go everywhere and glorify Radharani to everyone. And tell everyone, become Radha Dasi. Become the maid servants of Srimati Radharani. Alone I am one person. I cannot serve her by myself. But if all of you will serve Radharani with me, it will go some way to repay my debt. So in Gorilila, Krishna, in Krishna Lila, Krishna is Akritagya, ungrateful. He's thinking himself. Actually, he's very soft hearted, but his love is making I'm ungrateful. And in Gorilila, now he's become completely grateful and all Sakis are happy. Then, third desire. Third desire is Guru Drogi. Hmm? For no reason. Krishna is giving pain to Braj Gopis disappearing in Rasali. They're in his shelter. Why is he giving, giving pain? Hmm? So he should learn to be, give up this Guru Drogi. How did Krishna, in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, become free from the fault of being a Guru Drogi? And how did Krishna get out of this trap that the gopis set for him in Rasalila? We'll explain tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.